Hello friends, this is Brother Carlos here and welcome to one of the most powerful teachings okay, you can ever listen to right straight from the Word of God. The, we are talking about promises of God that will make you healthy and wealthy, right straight from the Word of God, okay? So, and, um, and all you have to do is apply this to your life on a regular basis and God will take care of the rest because God always backs his word. He always backs his promises. Okay. Without further ado, let's just go ahead and start now by, you know, meditating on Proverbs 3. What is Proverbs chapter 3? Well, let me tell you what Proverbs 3 is. Proverbs 3 is a road map to a healthy life, okay, and to a prosperous life, okay, and there's more in between, okay, so I'm going to ask you right now to pay close attention to this teaching as I am reading from the Word of God, and we're going to debate here, you know, some of the biblical truth from this uh, uh, chapter, Proverbs chapter 3, okay? And, and and it is a very good idea if you want to apply this Proverbs chapter 3, okay, to your life, I recommend that you do it on a daily basis. Why? Because it talks about meditating on the Word of God. And meditating on the Word of God is something that we do daily, just like prayer, just like, you know, the spiritual things that we do. We must do on a daily basis, even thanking God for our daily bread or asking God for our daily bread. We should do it on a daily basis, right? Like Jesus taught us, give us this day our daily bread. So we must do that daily, okay? God, God has to be number one in your life. And let me tell you why. Because God, you know, if he is not number one in your life, then Satan is. Okay, if God is not the number one in your life, then Satan is. Okay, then you know. If Satan is the number one in your life, guess what's going to happen? Curses, okay, pain, suffering, okay, oppression, depression, that kind of stuff. So you want to make sure God is the number one in your life. So you can have peace, prosperity, enjoy life, you know, uh, long life, you know, that kind of stuff. So let's... Let's just go ahead and go now to, you know, Proverbs chapter 3. And then these are the first things that I want to talk about. And then there's another one that I want to talk about right after it. Okay, please, please pay close attention. And if you have to do this, if you have to listen to this teaching more than one time, feel free to do it because the, the more the better, because I want to make sure you understand what we are dealing with. Okay. This is so, so important. So now, this is what the Word of God says, and this is Proverbs chapter 3, right from, you know, the King, the New King James Version. New King James Version. This is what the Word of the Lord says. My son, do not forget my law, but let your heart keep my commands for length of days and long life and peace. They will add to you. Listen. Right from start, okay, the promises of God, okay, are already talking about, you know, being spoken about here as length of days, long life. So long life is a blessing from God. Long life is a promise from God, right? How many people die very young, right? So long life, and not just long life, but also peace. That's what, you know, the word says here. Okay, by obeying God, you know, you benefit from length of days, long life, and peace. Okay, because those will be added to you. Let's go now to verse 3. The Bible says here, Let not mercy and truth forsake you. Bide them around your neck. Write them on the tablet of your heart. And so find favor and high esteem. In the sight of God and men. Well, this is another promise. If you not let, if you do not forsake, you know, mercy and truth. You speak the truth, you know, quit lying. Also show mercy to people. 
when they sin against you, show mercy to them. These are the things that God is speaking to you so you can have these, you know, bind around your neck. So in other words, wherever you go, you must take it with you, mercy and truth. Okay, do not forsake them. Write them in the tablet of your heart, on the tablet of your heart. And then what happens next? And so find favor and high esteem in the sight of God and man. Favor. Favor with God, favor with men. Okay, so now when you go and apply for a good job, you're going to get the job. Why? Favor with men. It's coming right from the word of God. Verse 5. Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct your path. There's another promise here. If you trust in the Lord with all your heart, and if you lean not on your own understanding. So in other wor words, all the decisions you make, you want to make sure God is in it. You make sure you consult with God in your heart before you make that decision. And then what the Bible says is God will direct your path for you to make right decisions. Okay. He's going to direct your path so you will not be making mistakes. That applies to every area of life. Pay attention, folks. Okay. Verse seven. Do not be wise in your own eyes. Do not say, Oh, I know everything about everything. Never say that. That because, <clears throat> you know, the Bible says, do not be wise in your own eyes. Now, what comes next is fear the Lord and depart from evil. How many of you hear preachers talk about the fear of the Lord? They don't talk about. When they talk about, they say, you know, it's not fear. It's not like, a, you know, fear uh, uh, or being a fear means being afraid of. If you have the fear of the Lord in you, then that means you are afraid of God. Why? Because his hand is very heavy. Okay, his hand is very heavy. If his hands come down on you, crashing you, it's going to be painful. That's why we ought to fear God. We ought to be afraid of God. Okay, so that's not how they talk in church. They don't teach you to be afraid of God. Okay, but that's what the word says. Be afraid of God. Fear God. So let's do it again, verse 7 here. Do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. It will be what? Health to your flesh and strength to your bones. When people want to be healthy, they go to pharmacies and buy medication so, you know, they can be healthy or, or at least hope to be or start eating healthy food, which is a good thing, no, you know, amen. But they put their confidence in things. They put their confidence in food. They put their confidence in, in pharmaceutical drugs rather than in the word of God. So this is a road map, okay, to become healthy and wealthy. So that's why I want you to pay attention here. So if you, if you are not wise in your own eyes and if you fear the Lord and depart from evil, then you will be healthy, okay, and you have and you will have strength, you know, in your bones, amen, because that's a promise of God, okay. Now, verse nine: Honor the Lord with your possessions and with the first fruits of all your increase, so your barns will be filled with plenty and your vats will overflow with new wine. So this means provision, God's provision. When you put God first, when you honor God with your possessions and with the first fruits of all your increase, then God will make sure, okay, you're going to be prosperous. He make, makes sure that you are going to enjoy Okay, the fruits of your hands. Okay, that's a promise. Now, what I'm going to be talking next after this chapter has to do with verse 9 and 10. So we will probably come back to them again. But, you know, let's, let's move on here. Verse 11. <clears throat> verse 11. My son, do not despise the chastening of the Lord, nor detest his correction. For whom the Lord loves, he corrects just as a father, the son in whom he delights. So friends, God corrects us. And when God corrects us, it's painful. We feel the pain. That doesn't mean God is rejecting us. 
It's just meaning that he is trying to, you know, wake us up so he can, you know, do the right thing. And sometimes that is painful because God is going to allow bad things to happen to us, but not to destroy us, but to wake us up. So when you feel like God is chastening you, okay, be happy because God is simply, you know, taking you out of that wrong turn and putting you in the right direction. That's what God is doing. And again, it's painful sometimes, you know. Verse 13. Happy is the man who finds what? Wisdom. And the man who gains what? Understanding. Now pay attention to what comes next. Happy is the man who finds wisdom and the man who gains understanding. Verse 14. For her proceeds are better than the profits of silver, and her gain than fine gold. She is more precious than rubies. And all the things that you may desire cannot compare with her. Now let's go and see verse 16. Again, length of days is in her right hand, and in her left hand, riches and honor. Let me repeat that, because this is what we are talking about here is health and prosperity. Okay? All right. How to be healthy and wealthy. Okay, it's coming right from the Word of God. I'm, I'm not the one that wrote this. God did. And God did for a reason. Because He wants you to be a blessing, and He wants you to be blessed. So, so once you are blessed, you can become a blessing, right? So God wants to bless you. Okay, amen. So verse 16 again. Okay, let's read verse 15. Uh, I mean, uh, I want to read verse 13. You know, happy is the man who finds what? Wisdom. And the man who gains understanding. Now, wisdom comes from God and understanding comes from God. Always remember that. It not, it's not something that you learn in university. This is not something you learn in college. Wisdom you learn from God himself. Understanding you learn from God himself. Now, verse 16. Length of days is in the wisdom's right hand. Okay, and in the wisdom's left hand, riches and honor. Okay, riches and honor. Verse 17. Her ways are, I mean, her ways are ways of pleasantness. And all her paths are peace. All her paths are peace. It's talking about wisdom. Verse 18. Wisdom is a tree of life to those who take hold of her, and happy are all who retain her. So wisdom, folks, pay attention, wisdom. Wisdom comes from God. Ask God for wisdom, because without wisdom, you will not be wealthy and you will not be healthy according to the promises of God. And even if you become wealthy, you might lose everything, okay? Most people who become wealthy end up losing everything. Most people, why? Because their wealth were not based on the Word of God. It was based in man's wisdom, okay? But now we are talking about God's wisdom. So that's why it is important that you meditate on the Word of God daily. Proverbs 3 is a roadmap to what? to health and wealth, okay, and other things in between, such as peace, okay? So now, let's move on here with to verse 19. The Lord, by wisdom, founded the earth. By understanding, he established the heavens. By his knowledge, the depths were broken up, and clouds dropped down the dew. Verse 21, my son, let them not depart from your eyes. Keep sound wisdom and distraction. I mean discretion. Keep sound wisdom and discretion. So they will be life to your soul. Listen, they will be life to your soul and grace to your neck. Then you will walk safely in your way. It's talking about now protection. And your foot will not stumble. Pay attention, folks. 
It is very, very important that we walk in God's wisdom and understanding because they will protect you. They will make sure your foot will not stumble. They make sure you will be walking safely in your way. With so many crimes rising everywhere, so many drive-by shootings everywhere, you see, God is still promising you, if you do this, you will be safe. It doesn't matter. You can walk among people shooting one another, and you still will come the other side unharmed. Why? Because God himself is protecting you. Okay? So verse 24, when you lie down, you will not be afraid. Yes, you will lie down and your sleep will be sweet. Brothers and sisters, I talk to so many people and I hear this all the time. You know, I'm, I have constant nightmare. I have constant nightmares. Almost every night I have nightmares. Well, let me tell you something. If you are having nightmares, look, the Bible talks about your sleep being sweet. Well, then... That tells you and that tells me that you are not walking in God's wisdom. You are not walking in God's wisdom. You don't have his understanding on, on your life. That's why your sleep is not sweet. It's sour or, you know, bitter. You know, when you have too many nightmares, something is wrong with you, folks. You need to get back on track and you need to do it right away before Satan takes you out. That's a sign that your life, something in, li in your life is not right. That's why it is important that you meditate in the word of God every day. And, and, and especially here, Psalm 3, because Psalm 3 is a road map to having peace, wealth, health, and a bunch of other things. To walk safely, which means protection. Psalm 3, you know, Proverbs 3, I'm sorry, I, I think I said Psalm, but Proverbs 3 is a road map to a, 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 a peaceful life, you know, to enjoying, you know, you know, peace and prosperity and, and health, okay? God's protection. That's why it is important that we meditate on God's word and we do our best to walk in these promises, because if you walk in these promises, God himself will protect you. He will make sure that blessings will come your way and curses will get out of you. This chapter he is about breaking curses. It's about breaking curses. There's no way to break curses, you know, away from Proverbs chapter 3. Because this gives you a road map to be curse-free. Curse-free. Meditate on this and do your very best to apply it to your life. So you'll be breaking curses off of yourself and off your descendants. If these curses are not broken, your descendants will also, you know, be cursed. That's the way it is. Okay, now verse 25. Do not be afraid of sudden terror, nor of trouble from the wicked when it comes. For the Lord will be your confidence and you and will keep your foot from being caught. Let me read that again. Do, verse 25 and 26. Do not be afraid of sudden terror, you know, nor be nor of trouble from the wicked when it comes. For the Lord will be your confidence and will keep your foot from being caught. Protection, folks. Protection. If you want to, you know, be protected every day, if you want your family to be protected every day, your descendants, then walk, okay, in the truth of God's word. Make sure God is number one in your life. Not Satan, God, okay? Make sure you follow this roadmap right here because this will give you everything you need to succeed in life. And enjoy life. Amen. Praise God. Verse 27. We're almost done here with this part. And then I'm going to talk about the next part. Which is, you know, promise of God regarding, you know, wealth. Right? So, um, let's just go ahead now and read like, uh, you know, uh, 27. Do not withhold good from those to whom it is due. When it is in the power of your hand 
to do so. Let me read that again. Do not withhold good from, uh, you know, to, let me read it again. Do not withhold good from those to whom it is due. When it is in the power of your hand to do so. Remember homeless people, beggars. They need to eat too. If you see them on a street corner and you have a little bit change, give it to them. That's what the Bible is saying here. Do not withhold good from those to whom from, from those to whom it is due. You know, and, and also, you know, if you owe money to somebody, pay it. That's the same thing here. When it is in the power of your hand to do so. Now, verse 28. Do not say to your neighbor, go and come back, and tomorrow I will give it. When you have it with you. If you have something with you that you can benefit somebody that is asking, don't tell them to come back tomorrow. You have it now. Just give it. That's what the Bible is saying. Verse 29. Do not devise evil against your neighbor, for he dwells by you for safety's sake. Do not strive with a man without cause, if he has done you no harm. Okay? Verse 31. Do not envy the oppressor and choose none of his ways. For the perverse person is an abomination to the Lord, but his secret counsel is with the upright. Verse 33. Now listen to this. Most people don't know this. They don't pay attention to this. That's why their homes are haunted. That's why there's curses in their homes. Listen to this. Verse 33. The curse of the Lord is on the house of the wicked, but he blesses the home of the just. Let me read that again. Okay, there's a reason why some houses are haunted. There's a reason why. Look, God has the answer for it. The curse of the Lord is on the house of the wicked, but he blesses the home of the just. Verse 34. Surely he scorns the scornful, but gives grace to the humble. The wise shall inherit glory, but shame shall be the legacy of fools. Shame shall be the legacy of fools. Folks, this is it. This is Psalm, uh, uh, this is Proverbs chapter 3. Okay, now we're going to go to the next step here, which is the, you, what I'm going to talk about next. You don't hear in church. They don't talk about this. They talk about it in a, in a different way, but they don't talk about the way it's supposed to be talking about. That's why a lot of people are still cursed. Even though being tithers, giving the tithe into the Lord, they're still cursed. They still don't prosper. There's a reason why. That's what is coming up next here, okay? Just give me a second here. Okay, all right. So let's talk about now the next portion of this teaching, which is very, very important. And you don't hear this in church. I'm reading now from Leviticus chapter 27, verses from 30 to 32. Leviticus chapter 27, verses from 30 to 32. Okay. Now, let me read from the Word of God, and then I'm going to explain to you how things are supposed to be. This is what the Bible says. And all tithe, one tenth, right? Tithing. And all tithe of the land, whether of the seed of the land or of the fruit of the tree. I'm reading from the New King James Version. Okay. I'm reading Leviticus 27 verses from 30 to 32 from the New King James Version of the Bible. Okay. Amen. If you are reading a different translation, you know, some of the words are be diff may be different, but the context is the same. Okay, so let me read it again. Verse 30. And all the tithe of the land, whether of the seed of the land or of the fruit of the tree, is the Lord's. It belongs to God. It is holy to the Lord. It is holy to the Lord. In other words, it is consecrated to God. It belongs to Him. One tenth, okay, of our income belongs to God, and it's holy to God, okay? That's one way that we put God first in our lives and not Satan. 
Because if we are not, you know, honoring God in this fashion, then we are honoring Satan because we end up sowing money into Satan's kingdom. And that's going to get us in trouble, a lot of trouble. So let me read it again. And then I'm going to meditate on it and tell you exactly how it's supposed to be done. That's what they don't teach in church. In church, they teach you to give 10%. Okay? That's why people give 10% and they are still cursed. Because they're still robbing God. Yeah. They give 10% and they're still robbing God. Well, let's find out why. And all the tide, verse 30 again, and all the tide of the land, whether of the seed of the land or of the fruit of the tree, is the Lord's. It belongs, they belong to God. It is holy to the Lord. Verse 31. If a man wants at all to redeem any of his tithes, if he wants, because he there, you know, he's keeping 90% already. But if he wants to redeem the 10% that belongs to God, he can. Okay? God is not saying, no, you cannot. No, God is saying, yeah, you can. But let's see what's happened next. He shall add one-fifth to it. He shall add one-fifth to it. What is one-fifth? One-tenth is 10%. One-fifth is 20%. 20%. Don't go anywhere. Okay. If a man wants to keep the 10% that belongs to God, he must add 20% to it. On top of the 10%, he shall add 20%. So now you know that 10% is not enough to keep you out of curses. Okay. Because you're still robbing God. Now, I'm going to explain this, but let's read verse 32 first. And concerning the tide of the herd and of the flock, of whatever passes under the rod, the tenth one, one shall be holy to the Lord. So in other words, summarizing, okay? 10% of your income, of my income, belongs to God. Automatically, automatically. From your first income that you receive in your life, okay? 10% was holy to God. All right? So now you know. Amen? So now you know how long you have been robbing God, right? Because if you keep everything, you are honoring Satan. If you give 10%, you are honoring God. But at least this is the thing. Okay? How many times you started giving 10% and then later on you quit? And you didn't give 10% anymore. You kept it to yourself. Well, every time you kept the 10% of God to yourself, you owed God the 10% plus 20% over the 10%. So now, how does that mathematics work? Well, I, I'll explain to you how it works. Let's say you earn $10,000. So $10,000, $1,000 belongs to God. Now, if you keep that $1,000... And, and, and then later on, you want to pay God, that thousand dollar back to God. You got to add 20% to it, which is $200. So now instead of paying God back a thousand dollars, you're paying him $1,200. That's what the 10% come to play because the, I mean, the 20%, the 20% is out of, not out of the whole amount that you earn your whole income. Okay. It's from the tent that you took. That you kept. 90% belongs to you. Only 10% belongs to God. Now 20% is off the 10%. Not off the 100%. Because the other 90% didn't belong to God. Only 10%. So now God says, if you want to keep my 10%, you can. But pay me back. And add 20% to it. So now, instead of owing God $1,000 out of the $10,000, you owe God now $1,200. Now, you tell me if you know the amount that you owe God for keeping his 10% all throughout your life. You don't know. There's no way that you will find out. Well, then, there's one thing you can do to start paying that back. Since you cannot pay it all at once, even if you could, even if you knew the amount that you owed God. But let's say you still didn't have the money to pay him back. 
Well, there's another one. There's another way you can do it. Okay. Now, from now on, every time you give 10%, every time you're supposed to give 10%, add 20% to it to pay back what you been stolen from God, stealing from God. Okay. Add 20% to it. Now, when the Bible says in Malachi that we have been robbing God of the tithes and offerings. So the tithing, we already know, is 10%. But how about the offerings? Well, then if you add offerings to the tithing, it's going to be more. So I'll tell you what I'm doing, folks. Okay, I'll tell you what I'm doing. And you talk to God about the amount that you should do. But one thing I know, if you have ever, ever skipped, you know, giving God 10%, okay, then you owe God an interest rate of 20% of that 10%. So in other words, as I gave you the, gave you the example, if you owe God 10,000, okay, then, I mean, if you, you know, earn 10,000, then 1,000 belongs to God. And because you stole that money, you kept it for yourself. Now you, you want to pay back. Now add 20% to it. So that is one way that you can start paying God back. By adding 20% to it. Now, I'll tell you what I do because there's also offerings included. Okay, I do it 15% because I want to make sure I'm paying God back his interest. Even though I don't have all the money to pay him back for all the tithing that I have kept. But at least I'm showing him that I'm willing to pay him back. So now I'm adding 20% to my 10%, which, it's, which is 12% instead of 10 now, my tithing, instead of 10%, is 12%. But I'm also paying another 3% to cover for my offerings. Folks, if you are paying your tithing and you still owe money to God from tithings that you held before, you are still, okay, robbing God because you are not paying him back from the old money that you owed God. So do show God something that you are willing to pay him back. Show him that from now on, you're going to add that the one, one fifth, which is 20% to your 10%. Okay. And you can add another 1% or two or 3% or even more if you want to, to, to also give him the offerings on top of the tithing. So I'll tell you what I do, and I feel peace about it, and I have heard testimonies of people that did it the same way in the past, and they were very, became prosperous so much. So I do 15%. That gives me peace. That keeps me peaceful with God, because at least I'm not paying God all that I owe at once, but I am willing to pay him back little by little. And I believe he will be glad with that, because at least I'm doing more than the 10%. If I only give 10%, I will continue robbing God because I owe him the interest of tidings that I kept to myself before. Now you talk to God about it. This is the roadmap for you to become healthy and wealthy. Okay? Healthy and wealthy. Now you talk to God about it. I gave you the roadmap for you to become healthy and wealthy. Okay, and, and, and also having peace in your life and prosperity and protection and all the other stuff. Now, if you agree with me or if you do not agree with me, I encourage you to listen to the whole, this whole teaching again more than one time. Listen to it two, three, four times until you get it. Because the moment that you get it and you start applying this to you, your life will change. Because God backs his promises. He backs his word. Amen. Leviticus chapter 27, verse 30 to 32. I read it from the New King James Version of the Bible. Next time now they say that you have to pay 10% in church. Always remember 10% is not enough. If you have ever kept in a portion of your tithing, which I believe you have, because I think everybody has done it, then you owe a God more than just 10%. You owe God more. Okay, so go back and read these scriptures for yourself. Leviticus chapter 27, verses from 30 to 32. Okay, and do it what you feel in your heart that is the right thing to do in between you and God. If you do it God's way, 
He will back you. He will prosper you. He will make sure that cancer will leave your body because God is faithful to his promises. He is promising you in, in Proverbs chapter 3. Okay, he's promising you if you fulfill that scripture right there, Proverbs 3, you will become healthy. You will become healthy because that's what the word of the Lord says. You have strength in your old days. Okay, you have strength in your bonds. That is a promise right from heaven, right from the word of God. God bless you now. And if you decided to do, to to start honoring God with your 15% or 13 or 12, I would say to you, okay, you should start with my ministry because I'm the one teaching you this. You have never, ever heard this in church. You heard this probably for the first time from me, okay? And we also receive tidings and offerings at my website, brothercarlos.com, brothercarlos.com. BrotherCarlos.com, you can, you know, offer your tithing there, plus your offerings, and plus your payback, you know, your interest there from, you know, your 13, 12, 15%, however you want to do it. Okay, but you should do it more than 10% because that is the way to do it. You got to add the interest. You can honor God through our ministry. That's what I recommend because I'm the one teaching you this. Nobody else is. I'm the one. Okay, so I believe God wants you to sow your 15% or 12 or 13 in, or 14 in my ministry, brothercardus.com, brothercardus.com, okay? All right, and if I were you, I would start applying this to your life immediately. God bless you now and have a wonderful day. Bye now.